All right, people, welcome back to school through your computer. Um, hope you had a good spring break. It's going to be a bit rough, probably re-entering into the atmosphere of online learning. So we just hold on tight. Uh, this week going to be pretty important, but also pretty, I think, doable. I've got one thing to talk about here this morning uh, about the last topic on the test. And then I'm going to release the test for you to take. You also got this 1960s essay to, to complete, which nobody has, at least in this class. Um, and then you want to make sure that you do the vocab by the end of this week. So Friday, all that stuff is due. I'm not going to put grades in until Friday. Um, and that's when I'll put this grade in and this grade and that grade and yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, so you have until Friday to get caught up, take the test, and write the essay. The last topic, though, I want to talk about is going to be uh, a Supreme Court topic. So the Supreme Court, they're the law of the land. Um, they are the ones that, what, they decide if a law is legit or if some things need to change with it or expand or they interpret things, okay? So in the 1960s, there was this dude who was the governor of California. Um, and this is actually in the 50s when this happens. But he's the governor of California. And he is appointed as the Supreme Court Chief Justice. There he is, Earl Warren, by Dwight Eisenhower. So Dwight Eisenhower is a Republican. He picks this guy who thinks he's going to be a conservative as a judge, which is typically what happens. Um, but this guy kind of makes Eisenhower mad because he changed, it's like he uh, has a change of heart about his beliefs in what um, the government should do or people's rights because in the 60s he rules on a lot of cases that changes the history and basically um, it changes the rights that you have as Americans to this day. So this presentation is dedicated to talking about those four areas right there that this Warren court really revolutionized and changed and expanded for all of us. First one is uh, the area of voting rights. So there was a couple cases, Baker versus Carr and Reynolds versus Sims, which um, changed representation in the country so these both of these cases there was like so every 10 years like right now there's a census going on right your, your parents probably filled it out I think it was I filled mine out like last week but it's just trying to get you counted and the reason they do that is so that if your population changes as a state um, you get to change the number of representatives you have so let's say um, all of a sudden a bunch of people move into the state because of a new industry that's that props up in the in the state um, when they see the numbers change they'll give us they'll give that area a new representative if the numbers change by a lot okay so back in the Dizay in the 1960s what happened was they took the census and then they didn't update the maps for like a hundred years <laughs> Um, so in both cases, and this is in the South, I think in Tennessee and Alabama, um, basically in places where there were higher minority populations, like there was a, a large African American population or Hispanic population, they were not equally represented. So like one person would represent like, uh, what, a hundred thousand people and then if you went out to the country where people used to live when they recorded the numbers, it was like for 40 people, they had a representative. So it was not fair to the people that lived in the cities because that's where the, that's basically where the minority lived. And so they were not being represented in Congress um, accurately. So this these two cases makes it so you have to change your your electoral or your district maps so that everybody is equally represented by uh, based on the population. So the idea is 
one person, one vote. Everyone's vote should matter the same amount. Um, and this is a big step in helping uh, the cities or places where lots of minority groups are living to have more of a, a say in things that are going on and have a representation that's fair. Um, so yeah, that's the first area. Voting rights. Number two, we're going to... Ba -ba -da -ba, due process? Yes. Matt versus Ohio. Gideon versus Rain Wainwright. Escobedo versus Illinois. And Miranda versus Arizona. Um, all these cases are about giving you fair treatment before the law. So, Matt versus Ohio. That case is kind of crazy. You can, I mean, you can look these up. I'll post like, I'll post Wikipedia articles to each of them or something like that. Um, but Matt versus Ohio is pretty crazy. So this this lady was accused of hiding a bombing suspect. So some dude like blew up a building, and they thought that he was hiding at this lady's house. So they went to go find him there. They didn't find him. They didn't have a proper search warrant. And in their search for the bomber, they found a big box of a porn. And back then it was illegal to have porn or like what explicit images that she had in this giant trunk in her house. And they found it. She's like, that was, I didn't, that was here when I got here. I swear to God, it's not mine. And they were like, oh yeah, funny story. You can come with us now because you're breaking the law with your porn. And so they took her to jail and uh, the case goes all the way to the Supreme Court and basically says that you have to have a specific search warrant to get into a house. Um, and if you find something that's locked and you don't have a warrant for it, you can't open it. Um, so if the, if the search warrant is for a person and you don't find a person, you can't just start busting open everything to search for things that you're not supposed to be searching for. Like explicit images so that's what happened in map versus ohio allows you some more privacy gideon versus wainwright this is a big one this one allows you to have a lawyer if you cannot afford one this dude i watched i watched a movie in ninth grade civics called gideon's trumpet um yeah at the time i thought it was just not a great way to walk, like spend my time in civics but to this day i still remember it this dude, Clarence Earl Gideon, was accused of stealing a bunch of quarters from a pool hall, I believe. Um, and he didn't have enough money for a lawyer when he was on trial, so he tried to defend himself. And if you've ever seen that happen, it's not pretty. Uh, I watched it actually happen last year. This guy was defending himself in a drunk driving case. Uh, it didn't go well. Um, his whole argument was that he did not agree with the law. So yeah, not not a good defense. If you <laughs> um, don't argue that one, always get your public defender to support you. So Gideon versus Wainwright, that guy eventually appeals to the Supreme Court. Gideon gets a retrial with a lawyer provided for him, and he wins. He gets off the hook because he didn't do it. Uh, so you can thank that guy for when you do something that you probably shouldn't have done, and they give you a lawyer for it. That's because of Gideon versus Wainwright. Uh, next one, Escobedo versus Illinois. This one allows you to um, see your lawyer before you are interrogated. So basically, this guy is being interrogated for hours and hours. He doesn't know his rights, and they kind of trick him into confessing. Well, when this whole time he could have talked to a lawyer, he didn't have to say anything. Um, so that's what that case does. Miranda versus Arizona, another big one. This is the one that you see on movies all the time, Law and Order, where when they arrest somebody, you have to tell them their rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. One, if, if you cannot afford one, one will be appointed for you. Uh, don't know the rest. But anyway, all the cops know it. And, uh, you, if you don't, if you don't hear those rights, and you don't know them, then if a trial ever comes up, you can bring that up in your appeal. Like, hey, they never read me my rights. This crime is not prosecutable. Prosecutable? That's a, maybe that's a word. Um, 
So Miranda versus Arizona, that was uh, because this guy was not read his rights. And because of that, he ended up confessing in a way that he probably wouldn't have if he knew that he didn't have to say anything at all. So that's Miranda versus Arizona. Because of those cases, you have the right to privacy. Uh, you got to have a specific search warrant. You have the right to a lawyer. You have the right to know your rights. You have the right to see your lawyer in, in an interrogation setting. Um, so yeah, that was a big area that they changed. Next one! Prayer in schools and privacy in general. So a couple of cases, Engel versus Patel, Abington School District versus Shemp. They outlawed or prohibited from forcing kids to do a prayer in school. So before this, there would be like some public schools would have, it require you to do like daily prayers in class, daily Bible verse readings until some kid was like, I don't really believe that. So I don't think I should have to pray to your God because um, I don't believe in that one. I believe in this one. And so that was ruled as totally legit. So you don't have to be forced to pray in school. If you want to pray in school, if you want to do it in your own time, that's fine. We have that at our school. Um, but you can't, like a teacher can't be like, all right, whip out your Bibles. Here we go. <laughs> um, because, yeah, guess what? There's more than one religion represented in public school. So that's the separation of church and state right there. Uh, those two cases do that. And then this last one, Griswold versus Connecticut. Uh, so it used to be illegal to buy birth control. Okay. So what happened is this lady buys birth control. She's arrested for it. It's kind of a planned action. And so they appeal it. They appeal it. It goes to the Supreme Court. And they finally rule that uh, married women can buy birth control. Um, which, like, thinking about it now, it seems kind of crazy that that was against the law. And even after this, like, you'd think if you're a married woman, that's probably the person that would need birth control the least because they're married. But that was the first step. And then after this case, there was another case that said unmarried women can do that too. You know, it's funny is I'm up in this room in this office, doors closed. Mateo still knows that I'm recording because he's trying to yell as loud as he possibly can, but I can't hear him. <laughs> it's not like I locked him in a room, but he's just trying to mess with me right now, even from downstairs. Smart little bugger, that Mateo. Anyway, um, that is how the Warren Court changed those two areas of prayer in schools and privacy. Final impact, ba -ba -da -ba. here we go. Basically, expands all the rights that people have. So because of that dude with that haircut and that giant melon of a head, um, you have the right uh, to not be forced to pray in school. You have the right to get birth control. Um, you have the right to an attorney. You have the right to know your rights. You have the right to be represented equally. Your vote should count just as much as the next person. So, pretty important impact, which is good to know that, hey, the Supreme Court, they do things that matter. Okay, the Supreme Court's not just this third branch of government that doesn't do anything. A lot of their stuff is super important. So, um, don't sleep on the Supreme Court, people. I think for the activity of this, I'm going to have you basically outline what major areas they changed. So, it's pretty easy. It's right there on the screen, <laughs> due process, voting rights, prayer, and privacy. And then I'm also going to ask you to pick what you think is the most, like if, these were, if there was a battle royale, a royal rumble, if you will, between all of these cases, who would come out on top? Which of those is the most important? What area do you think um, is the has the biggest impact on everybody? and then explain that. So that's your assignment for today. One little thing I want to make sure you know about a change that was made on classroom is that from now on, no matter what class you're in, this is where the link is for the Google Meet that we'll have um, twice a week. Okay, so it's just right there. It's not going to be an invite on your calendar. 
they changed that at, like yesterday or something. Um, make sure you answer the, the attendance questions. Make sure you hand stuff in. Text me if you got some questions. Uh, we'll meet when? Friday, I think, is the next meeting. Um, and then remember, I have this agenda that I edit every week to let you know what's happening. So, this week, and this, by the way, if you click here, there's also a link to go to that same thing that I mentioned before. So, today, oh, I didn't complete this today. Wait, today's Wednesday. There we go. So, watch Warren Court video. You did that. And then make the Google form nice and pretty. Tomorrow, do the essay, take the test. Um, Friday, finish both. Okay. Uh, also make sure you do the vocab. Yeah. I mean, you can start on this stuff today. I'm going to release the test. I think today, um, you got one chance to take it. So use that wisely. Um, prepare yourself, study. Okay. The question that you're supposed to look at is how did the U S change in the 1960s? If I were writing this essay, I would talk about, you could talk about the new frontier. You could talk about the, the Kennedy assassination. You could talk about um, LBJ and the Great Society. Um, you could also talk about the Warren Court. Um, I think I might actually make a music um, lecture that you could use too. Because music changed in the 60s as well. But uh, I'm going to drop that one tomorrow. So... That is what you got going ahead, and there, uh, maybe I'll do like a review. I'll do like a review video. I'll post that tomorrow. Um, yeah, text me if you got questions. Otherwise, I'll see you Friday at your designated time. There they are. So Friday 11 for block two, block four, I'll see you at two. Um, yeah, also check out the crossover on Apple Podcasts with myself and Sean Keating. Peace.